Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to yet another episode of the House of Moody Vintage Podcast. I know it's uh, as, as usual. Listen, I'm still trying to get used to this new schedule, okay? This new schedule, okay? And um, it's been a week. And last week was, it technically still is, a holiday over here, okay? Um, and 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 it's still going. It's Songkran, you know what I mean? It's the Thai New Year, right? Water festival and all that shit. Like, we just, everybody getting squirted out there, you know? Not in the way you're thinking, you dirty, disgusting human beings. I'm talking about, you know, water guns and buckets of ice water. It's cool. L- listen, it's it's the hottest time of the year in uh, in Thailand. Uh, it's, you know, in, in Bangkok as well. Uh, but you know, if you're out outside the city a little bit more, you know, you 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 really feel that heat, and we really felt that heat because you know me and the fam bam, the original fam bam, uh, we took a little weekend trip. You know, had uh, one of my very 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 close uh, close friends, and of course also considered family. Of course, uh, had a little reunion kind of thing. You know, it was like a little reunion because we haven't seen each other in literally over a year, like a few years since I basically moved uh, to Bangkok. So. Uh, seeing seeing my friend Estella, who, um, aka my Gulab Jamun, um, I, I'm sorry. I know I got a nickname for everybody. I apologize. That's just what. Listen, it's it's these are terms of endearment. Okay, these people mean a lot to me. So if you have a nickname already, fam, if you already have a nickname and you're you're in my life, you mean a whole lot to me. I'm gonna be re- okay. All right. So if you're listening right now and I, you already got a nickname for me from me. It's, you're like you're super duper uber close, okay? Um, it's 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 familia level. You know what I'm talking about? So um, <laughs> so she's in town, you know, and we just thought this was the perfect time. Let's let's get away from the city a little bit, you know. Try something different, you know. I mean, yes, of course, you know, it's basically like a, a week long. Songkran is base basically like a week long, right? It's like five days going to the weekend. We have Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and of course. We also have Monday off, which is fucking amazing for people who <laughs> work. You know, we're like, oh, yes, get that extra day off. It's just, and you don't have to call in sick. You you don't have to take one of your annual leaves or whatever. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a holiday. It's like a government it's a holiday. Now, I know not everyone is blessed to have that type of breaks. And again, as usual, as I always say in all my damn episodes, is to count your blessings and, you know, be grateful. And just, you know, we're just feeling blessed, right? Just, just count your blessings. Um, cause some people don't have Monday off, you know, who actually still work here. People are still working right now, you know, while they're maybe the rest of the city or the rest of the country is probably, um, you know, enjoying their holiday. Some people won't get to enjoy the holiday until after, you know, until after everyone else has done it, or they just maybe don't, there's no break for them. You know, they're still working and, and, and grinding. So that just makes our break. The, the people who are privileged to have the privilege to, um, enjoy, the, that uh, this holiday and this break or whatever, um, you know, we just got, we just, we just feel more grateful, I guess. You should be feeling more grateful for that. So anyways, it's Songkran, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's Bengali New Year as well, you know, Bala Vashak and, um, as well as, um, uh, um, I think it's Vaishaki in, in Punjab, right? I believe so. All, it's always the same. I don't know. We have the same calendar. So I don't know how that works. If they're on the, literally on the other side of the, 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 co- the coast, of the of because we're if we're in Bangladesh and then Punjab is literally on the opposite end. So um, anyways, um, <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's you know it's it's Boyla Boyjak and it's you know it's beginning of a new year and all that stuff and uh beginning beginning of spring or whatever whatnot. Um, but also you know there are like I said people who are not enjoying it. You know there's been a few fires, um, back in Dhaka which is very saddening and it's heartbreaking to see so many people just la- literally lose their livelihood, which is, oh boy, it's depressing, you know? Um, it's just, you know, one disaster after another um, back in Bangladesh. So uh, it sucks, you know, people can't really enjoy uh, the beginning of something new or different, you know? And also, they Dhaka, for example, just recorded their hottest day in like 50 plus years or something. It's insane. It's what's going, it's crazy. It's crazy. But you know, global warming isn't real. So um, I don't know what, how that's happening, how it's what's going on and how we're, you know, sweating our asses off because, you know, global warming doesn't exist. And um, I don't know if you can tell by the sarcastic tone of my voice when I said that, but um, it's hot. It's hot as fuck, bro. It's hot as fuck. Every, it's yeah, hot. It's hot, you know, especially in, you know, 
in the tropical climates like South Asia, Southeast Asia, you know, we're in Thailand. Thailand's hot as fuck now, too. It's crazy as sh- it's, it's, oh my God, it's nasty. It's nasty hot right now. And, uh, but, you know, um, yeah, we felt, we felt a little bit of that heat over the weekend. You know, we went to, uh, Kanchanaburi with, um, like I said, with my fam, you know, uh, it's right on the, the famous River Kwai, you know, the famous River Kwai. Um, I'm just, I'm saying that with a little accent, just to, you know, put a little, put a little pizzazz in there. Um, yeah, so the, you know, the, 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 the famous River Kwai, it was, it was beautiful, you know, just to get away from the, you know, it, you need those moments, like, or days where you're away from the, the hustle and bustle of, of the city, of course, you know, and we're working every day and, and so on. And, you know, I, listen, I'm a city boy. I, I, I grew up, I grew up in the suburbs, but it was very, you know, uh, back in California where, but, but it was, it was very, we had a lot of like city vibes going on in the, in the suburbs. You know what I mean? It was a very much a city vibe, you know, it was a very busy town that, that I grew up in, um, in the city that I grew up in. So, and then of course, living in Taka, you know, all throughout my entire twenties, uh, you know, (laughs) it's one of the most densely populated, if not the most densely populated city in the capital in the freaking world. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm a city boy, you know, I feel it, but you know, I love nature. I just the other day we was uh, I was just mentioning to my friend that I I think we were watching a movie or something like that or or, or something on TV and uh, there was snow and I'm like God damn I miss the I miss the snow, I do miss the snow. Um, as much of a beach guy I am, I'm a beach boy. I love beaches, you know what I'm saying. Um, I love all them beaches. You know what I'm saying, all them bad beaches, <laughs> you know, and all the good beaches, all the nice clean beaches as well. Um. I'm a Cali boy till, till I die. What can I say? Anyway, so uh, yeah, it was a great, great uh, weekend, you know, with the fam bam, and um, as well as just um, spending uh, spending quality time with with new friends who uh, I've gotten very close with very quickly, and um, again, uh, just another reason to feel blessed, another reason to you know count your blessings and shit, and be grateful for it. Um, and that just and that sort of brings me into the first. Uh, I guess well, technically, this is the second topic of discussion. Uh, you know, we got the we got the holiday stuff out of the way. Um, uh, it's still technically holiday break for us, but um, and 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 we did have a great time. It was um, uh, like I said, it's it's you know the the pace slows down a little bit, and you're you're closer to you're literally in nature, <laughs> not you know not just closer to nature, but in nature. Uh, you know, we had the river, of course, and the, and and sort of like the the forests nearby and things like that. And it was just great to just get away. It's like, these are things that you watch, you know, in movies and TV shows when you grow up and you're like, oh, I want to do that. I want to be like, you know, these adults and, and and with their adult friends and, you know, like close friends and go and just, um, you know, get an Airbnb or just like get a cabin or something just out in the woods, or you know. And it's just, uh, and, and it, you know, and we all had that moment over the weekend and we were just, this is dope. Like there were some certain things that we were kind of disappointed by, but, I think the experience was was not disappointing because we were with people who we cared about and that we love and and you know endless laughing and jokes and being stupid and just you know just really expressing the inner inner child in us you know and um I think that'll never go away because we're such a fun bunch and we're such you know the energy is so dope as always you know we're always vibing so it's never a dull moment you know and um and th- but then of course you know why would you want to invite someone who is dull right <laughs> I mean, if you want to be dull, you be you, but, you know, we actually are trying to have fun and joke around and be stupid and not take ourselves seriously. And um, so, yeah, so I wanted to say that because it brings me to the next subject. It's like, and something that I saw, it's something that I know that's happening and it happens um, and it's a message that I was, I was on Instagram and I was going through, you know, people's stories and I really don't usually watch celebrities' uh, stories. I always watch my friends' stories because... I mean, I'm more interested and in, in invested in my friends and what they're up to, and what they're doing, um, you know, without having to have a full on conversation with them. Right. I mean, because, you know, everyone's fucking busy and shit. And um, and of course, when people are not replying to you and they're sharing stuff on s- their stories or on Instagram or what, you know, whatever the social media thing is, it's just that it's their downtime. man. don't I mean, don't be don't be an asshole, you know, um, just be a little understanding. That's their downtime. That's the only time where they can sort of like shut off a little bit and they want to share certain things or you know on Instagram they just may not be in the mood to talk to you and that's okay that's really okay it doesn't matter if how 
close that person is, whatever. It's not going to be like that forever. You know, they eventually will reply to you. Um, you know, I mean, of course, there's a limit to that. You can't just, you know, it's not like they're going to wait like a month or two months and then come back to you on certain things, especially if you if you talk to this person regularly or whoever it is. Um, but yeah, it's okay. But, it's, you know, like I say, so I'm going through it and, and, and there are only really maybe a few celebrity stories that I'll, I'll be watching on Instagram and one of them is So Shy. Um, so Shy is a... a I don't know if you all know, but she's a singer. Uh, I've, I had a mad crush on her, like mad, 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 mad when she first came out, uh, you know, uh, working with Timbaland and all them. And so she has dope as fuck. Like, I love this woman. I love her energies. Her vibe is just dope as shit. She's always, she always keeps it real. She always keeps it simple. She was just talking about relationships. You know what I mean? Um, being single and all that stuff. And she was talking about relationships and it's something that sort of coincides with, um, another situation <laughs> um not mine not my situation um but the 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 ultimate message there was what Sosha was saying is that it's and the way I interpreted it and I think it's we're basically on the same page on this and I was just like yo 100 100 and I love Sosha because she always like interacts which I fucking love about this like, if I share something like if I wish her happy birthday whatever she's always interacting and she knows me I just want to like I just want to like she knows me okay um, we're like friends. Um, no, I remember I did a very, uh, sorry, I did a very, this really cool abstract ty- type of, uh, graphic design thing with So Shy, like way back in the day, like years ago, years ago, several years ago. Um, I think, it, I think it was like MySpace days. Fuck. Yeah, I think so. So I did this thing for her and I tagged her on it or whatever. And, uh, on, on Instagram not too long ago, uh, actually, probably a couple of years ago, actually, I think a couple of years ago, I shared it and I was like, and I tagged her and I was like, happy birthday, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And, um, um, you know, and, and the, and the caption read something like along the lines of, I did this for so shy way back when blah, blah, blah. And she replied, she's like, I remember this. And I was like, Oh snap, you what? So she remembered, she's like, I remember this very, I very vividly. I remember this. And, um, and it just, so, you know, it's it's that very, he- like, healthy amount of interaction that you have with celebrities. Um, well, when I say you you have, I don't know, I don't know, I'm, just, I'm talking like this is normal for me. It's not. Um, although, I did, okay, I'm not going to get to that. I'm, I'm not going to get to that later. But anyways, uh, I was going to say, just dropping a little drop, drop, something like drop, name dropping right now. Um, I did interview Mr. Bali Sagu. <sighs> oh, my God, I know. We'll get to that. Anyways. And I literally talked about him the the episode before. But anyways, so back to this, back to this. I don't get sidetracked. Okay, so so shy, right? So shy. So she's cool as fuck. I just wanted to get it out there. She's one of the coolest fucking people you can like interact with. I've never met her personally. I would love to meet her personally because she just seems like the individual. Like, oh yeah, that's my tribe. Like that person would definitely be my tribe. We'd definitely get along because the energy is like this just the same. You know, you have you have similar point of views. You know, maybe not be you, you may not like agree on every single thing, but you know, it's, for the most part, yeah, it's like, as I would, as I am with my friends, you know, we don't agree on everything, but, you know, there are a lot of similarities and, and, and values that we share. Anyway, so Sosha is dope as fuck. So she says, and uh, in, in the in the story that I saw about relationships, and she's talking about keeping it simple. Keeping it simple, like keeping it simple. It's simple, but it's not simple. You know what I mean? In the sense that I think what happens is in, in a relationship, the simpli- the simplicity part is if you're not feeling good and if you're not doing something that that is making you happy right if you're doing something that is making you happy great if you're if you're doing something that isn't or if the other person is doing something that it that isn't making you happy like you know what i mean you either just do something that makes you happy or or just or don't do it you know I know that's easier said than done. I get it. There's a lot of nuance when it comes to that. But it is that simple in the sense that could be used as your foundation, right? Your pillars, so to speak. So if you're in a relationship and whoever you, whoever the significant other is, and I know, and I'm saying this because I'm, I'm saying this out of experience and I'm saying this out of um, people in my life who are in current relationships or, you know, just whatever, they're whoever they're dealing with. And they have expressed quite well that this isn't making me happy. So I'm thinking, well, you kind of 
I mean, you just, it, you know, you shouldn't be wondering, right? Because you've gone through enough. You've gone through a lot in your life, not just in relationships, but in your life where you know that what makes you feel good, what makes you feel happy compared to what doesn't make you happy, what doesn't make you feel good, right? It's that, and there's a difference, a fine line between, um, you know, um, arguments, uh, disagreements, and just pure fucking arrogance, or er, sorry, ignorance, right? And when the ignorance comes along, you know, you, 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 the individual is taken for granted, and then you start questioning your, 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 your value, your, your worth, and I think when it starts doing that, you got to look internally, you know, it's not, it's not about whose fault it is, or you pointing, you know, your finger at this person or that, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about fault here. It's about looking inward and saying, wait, like, no, dude, I don't need to deal with this, you know, because there is, like I said, there's a, there's a fine line between like communicating, which is number one, you have to communicate in a relationship, regardless of what kind of relationship it is. Communication is fucking vital when it comes to any kind of relationship, right? Uh, whether it's, your, you know, family, friends, or, you know, in an intimate relationship, whatever, romantic relationship. Communication is key. I've always said this so many times. And it's not, it's not, I'm not saying something that's new. I'm not making a self-help book. This is not new. Nothing is under uh, new under the sun, right? This is something that should be drilled into your fucking head. Communication is fucking vital. You have to have that. So when you communicate that, and when you are trying to, not necessarily negotiate or compromise but trying to get the message across saying that hey this isn't right there's no the, the, the energy is negative you know what i mean i'm not happy this isn't this isn't working then you really have to you know like i said look look inward have that conversation with that individual and if that's already long gone and this has already happened before why put why are you putting yourself through it again like i said it's not even about you know, pointing the finger at anybody. It's just, it's just you. It's just you now. It's, it's literally you. I think what, what happens is that people, it's very dangerous, but people get caught up in, you know, in their little comfort zone, in that little shell, and they feel like, oh, I'm never going to ha have this again. Uh, you know, this, this, this doesn't have a fairy tale ending. I want a fairy tale ending. I'm, I'm sorry, my love, but <sighs> mi amor is, eh, you know, no bueno. You, you, have to, you have to let go. You have to move on. And, and do something that is going to make you happy. Okay? I'm sorry, I had a little, put a little, um, you know, Latino accent there. But um, <laughs> it's, no, let me, listen, man. All, with all jokes aside, it's, it's, it's really, I really agreed with Soshai because she just, just, just spot on. There was no, there's no complication there. You know, she's just like, yo, I just want to, I just want to have just chill vibes. Be happy, do good things for each other, for ourselves. I don't think it's that hard, man. I think when you, when you, I, I really honestly think people make it more complicated than it actually is. I really do. And you're, and if you are struggling to get that, those positive vibes or doing things that makes you happy or have the, or the other person doing things for you make, that make you, that make you happy without even having to ask, right? Um, and just, just like the little, just the little, you know, small things, you know, very small things that actually matter a lot. That's quite significant, which sort of describes or, or, or um, is the, the gives you the more ideal outcome, right? I mean, it, nothing's perfect, of course, but it gives you the, the outcome that I think is fair, right? But that's not going to happen if you are forcing something, if you're pushing something, like, oh, you know what, I gotta do this and make this person happy, or uh, this person to stay in love with me, and all this stuff, but I think it's like, damn, just number one, talk it out, and also, it, it'll get to a point where you can't talk it out, and it's not just, it's not gonna work, because it's the same old bullshit behavior from the individual, whoever it is, and and also, you're, you're enabling it, and I'm, you're enabling it. And that's something that I had to learn the hard way. You know, when my close friends were like, Moody, like half of that shit is your fault too because you're fucking enabling that behavior and how that person is. You're enabling that shit. You could just put a stop to it. You can just be like, yo, don't, okay? No, 
and if it and if it's beyond reasoning then quit you just got to you, you got to bail man you got to hit hit the you know hit the road hit the road jack go out the door you know what i mean so yeah i totally agree with her man just keep keep shit simple relationship simple you know what i mean and 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 the things that are are not simple that have more complexity you you solve it together you put your heads together and solve it how are you going to deal with it certain things i think your relationship shouldn't be um defined or uh, manipulated by outside forces but when those attempts are made then you sort of work it out together but also you can't be you have to be very aware of your surroundings um and have a and have a positive and very optimistic outlook when it comes to that because you can't be both ignorant as shit and you know you're ignorant as bliss type of attitude when you're both toxic for each other or you're in a very toxic relationship, you're an abusive relationship, whatever it is, right? You got to snap yourself out of that as well, you know, because, you know, there's a lot of people who, you know, like, no, you don't know him like, you don't know him like I do, like he loves me and all this stuff, you know? And sometimes, unfortunately, it's the person figures it out when it's too late. But if you've been through it over and over again, well, Number one, I think it says something about you. Um, again, it's not about blaming or pointing the finger. It's about, it's about you know, I mean, Habib, like, you you have to look yourself in the mirror and uh, and say, this this cannot continue, you know? So, yeah, man, I don't know. I just want, I really wanted to talk about that because it's just... <sighs> I don't want to put a damper in the episode. I think I think what I wanted, the message I want to get across is more empowering than putting a damper into it and then really saying that someone like Soshai, who of course is, you know, herself is very uh, experienced in, in, in a lot of things in, in life. She's seen the world and whatever. Um, but I don't think you really need to do that. I think it's just having interactions with human beings and seeing for what they are and who they are. And then making your decision after that. And I think if you've been already been in a situation where things have not improved and it's really bad, get the fuck out, dude. You know? Because guess what? There's going to be people out there in the world who are going to deliver that happiness, who are going to... I mean, you, first of all, you shouldn't rely on them for your happiness, but I'm saying there, there are going to be genuine, beautiful people in your life that will deliver that happiness without even you asking for it, without even expecting it, they'll come to it. I mean, it. They'll come to you with that, you know, with that positive energy, with those positive vibes, you know, and it's it's not impossible. I don't know why, why people have that fear, you know, just get yourself out of that. Fight, fight yourself through that because I'm telling you, I, I'm, I am a walking example of that. I will bring you peace, positivity, and love, man. You know what I'm saying? The Holy Trinity. That's how I does it. And I will always bring that to you, you know? I'm going to have my shitty days. I'm going to have my bad days. You know, you know, depressed or whatever. But, yo, know, just at the core, that's who I am. And I'm going to bring it to you, okay? I cannot be the only human being that is able to do that. That is effing silly, okay? There's a lot of people like me out there, okay? A lot more who will bring goodness into your world and into your life. So take that. I'm telling you right now. God damn it. Anyway, so shy. Shout out to her. Um, she's not going to be listening or watching, but <laughs> I just wanted to like, um, I thought she just made some really good points and I totally 100% agree with her on, on the relationship thing. Um, you know, if she basically said, I'd rather be single if I'm not getting all that, you know, good positivity and, you know, we're, we're building each other up. We're a positive influence in both of our lives. And and you move on from there. I think it's just the, the more beautiful part of it is that it can be that simple, you know, especially when you're a grown-ass adult. Why are you still trying to, you know, just fuck shit up, you know? I mean, it, listen, at the end of the day, that's if that's you, that's your decision, you make it, you're an adult, you live with the consequences, fine. That's your decision. So you deal with the consequences, Okay, but for me and for people like, you know, for me and like Soshai, we, I mean, just, just be, just be nice, just, you know, just be nice, be courteous, be, you know, compassionate 
have that passion, you know what I'm saying? Keep each other engaged. Uh, uh, be nice to each other, be kind to each other, you know what I mean? Like, th- that, that's the message that I always say at the end of every episode, right? Um, it's that simple, man. And it can be that beautiful. It really can. Because I've had those moments, you know what I mean? And I really believe in those moments. Um, and, you know, not all relationships are perfect, but at the end of the day, those two individuals or whatever kind of relationship you're in, they, they find a way because they really value each other, they love each other, they care for each other. And they want to make it work, you know, for themselves and for each other. Anyways, with that said, I think I babbled a little too much on that one. Um, I just, I don't know, I just felt a little, I just felt a little, um, you know, reflection, kind of inner reflection kind of thing. And talking about love and, and all that stuff, I think it's important to, uh, to have that resonate, you know what I mean? So just putting it out there. Keep it simple, people, keep it simple. That brings us to um, the last segment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, a very quick, quick thoughts on the latest episode of Succession on HBO, and of course, The Mandalorian just had uh, episode seven, episode eight, season finale is coming up um, very soon. Um, both at both shows and both these episodes, I think, just it was it hit it out of the park. It was fantastic. Everything you would expect. Succession all year, all season has been fantastic. Not all year. Um, uh, Mando had a little. You know, The Mandalorian had a little couple of episodes that, I, you know, everyone was like, if you like, what's happening? Why is this happening? Um, and also, you know, Din Djarin, who is, of course, the protagonist, the main protagonist of The Mandalorian, hasn't had too much to do with the story. He's kind of put to the side, strangely, in this, which I don't, I, I, I love. I love the fact that, you know, um, Bo-Katan uh, is, is leading this resurgence for The Mandalorians, um, you know, being the leader or slash you know the quote-unquote queen of of the mandalorians and um i love that i love that storyline but i you know at the expense of din Djarin, i don't know it's uh, very strange i don't know we'll see you know um i'm not gonna say any any spoilers or whatever but we'll see what happens in the season season finale of the mandalorian and if they actually i don't know i thought there would just be more there would be more significance um uh, towards din Djarin to uh towards um Pedro Pascal's character, of course, uh, he's he's a he's the Mandalorian. Um, but yeah, we'll see where where that goes. Succession's uh, latest episode was crazy. It was I mean, it it was just the dealing with with a death. That's all. The whole episode was that, and it's so crazy that so much goes on within that span of a you know an hour or less than an hour of an episode. But so much goes on just within that hour of someone significant who, um, you know, is Im- impacts more than just a family. It impacts an entire industry and so on. You see how billionaires, you know, deal with things. It's crazy. And, it's, and it, it's, it feels like it's not too far from the truth of how real, what happened in real life. Of course, there's there's obviously dark comedy in this, but I mean, that's, that's the show, right? Succession. But it's just wild how some of these characters sort of react to the news and how they deal with the situation. And they're humans at the end of the day, you know, regardless of what kind of relationship they've had with their parents, if it's not that great of a relationship. But um, it's, yeah, it's it's crazy. I, this episode was I, probably my favorite. Um, not that, like, the setting is pretty much the same. You know, they're all in the, in the same area, right? Um you know, certain characters, that, that is. And it just takes place in two different locations. But, yeah, and, and, and it's just the, the whole, you know, sequence of them trying to deal with a certain, you know, big, uh, impactful event that happens. It's And it's wild. It keeps you... It, it, I, I don't want to say... Anxiety, it's not anxiety-ridden, but it just keeps you alert. And it's like, wow, these, you know, it's like... They might be billionaires and some of them might be spoiled or privileged or blah, 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 whatever. But everyone has the way, their way of reacting to this event. And, uh, you know, and it's very realistic. Very realistic and just very well made. It's, it's brilliant. Succession is brilliant. And, um, of course, I've recommended it to so many people and, of course, on this podcast as well. And what I also do recommend at today's recommendation of the week Um I know it's been, uh, listen, last week, technically still, like I said, it's still a holiday. Last week it was uh, going into a break, scheduling and all that stuff. So this episode comes a little a little later than usual. Uh, apologies about um, 
the recommendation of this week is again we're going back to Netflix. We went from HBO and Disney Plus to now Netflix. We're talking about the series Beef. Okay, um, this series I cannot, I cannot praise it enough. Um, listen, it has a ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Okay, Beef has a ninety eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Starring, of course, Stephen Yun, Ali Wong, Joseph Lee, Young Martino, and David Cho, who was I thought he was. I did not. I did not know he was going to be in the show um, on, until um, he went on uh, Joe Rogan. Uh, did a did an episode of the podcast on Joe Rogan, and he was talking about, yeah, I got um, I, did, I auditioned for this uh, for this series, da da da, and nothing. I was like, oh, that's dope. David Cho is awesome. Anyways, so you know, it dropped on April 6, two thousand twenty twenty three. Uh, so it was about 10 days ago, and of course I binged it uh, because it was so damn good. Because when you have a cast like Steven Yeun, um, Ali Wong, you know, these are brilliant, brilliant uh, performers. Um, of course, Steven Yeun is more of a an actual, an actual like a real actor, right? That's his trade by actor. Ali Wong, of course, stand-up comedian and also a fantastic actress as well. So she's very good. You know, when you have, a, when you have those performance genes in you, you know, in your DNA... You're gonna do it, you know. You just you're you're just you just know how to deliver uh, a, a performance when it comes to a show or a movie or whatever or on stage or whatever it is. So Ali Wong's fantastic, of course. But beef is it's just yeah. it it cannot get more simple than as the synopsis itself. You know, like the, the the series info. If you go like a if you go to if you go to Rotten Tomatoes, for example, just one line, one line. Okay, it says. Two strangers get into a road rage incident that brings chaos into their lives. Like that's, you know, and so what what is up for the audience is to see that chaos, how it unfolds. And to me, of course, I'm not talking about spoilers. This TV series, um, I don't think there's going to be a season two. I don't think that's how the the series was structured. Um, there might be. I don't know. There could be. There could be some other things that they may have to deal with. Uh, in 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 the in the storytelling, but as for this, for season one, it has one of the most beautiful endings to a series for me. For me personally, I thought it was so beautifully done, especially the last scene of the show. Um, I can't I can't spoil it, but anyways, I thought it was so beautifully done because number one, you, you've you've got your obvious sort of given things like, you know, you're going to get a great performance by, by the, the cast. It was very well directed. Uh, I thought it was, I thought it was wonderfully, um, written. Um, and this is, this is the crazy part. It's the genre this, this, uh, this series is in is in comedy. I would like to think it's more of a dramedy than a comedy. It is more of a dramedy because there is a lot of, there is also dark comedy to it, but there is so much more realism. There is so much more emotions um, rather than, you know, something that you would probably see in a, um, like a slapstick comedy or a romantic comedy, right? Um, but this has so much more, it's heavy, man. It gets, it gets heavy and not in a depressing way. I mean, it might, it might trigger certain things, but, um, but it's just so wonderfully just overall beautifully done that you really have to appreciate, appreciate it for what it is. And and I think if you haven't already seen it, I think a lot of people would agree with me as well. Is that when you do watch it um, or if you've completed it, I don't think you would categorize it under comedy either. Yes, there's comedy in it. Uh, th- yes, there's comedians in it. Um, but the story itself is it's it's real. It's very fucking real, especially of uh, you know sort of the immigrant life. And um, certain cultures that we're all very, you know, that's relatable and that we're all very familiar with, you know, those kind of things are, um, will hit home hard. And it's, uh, and it's, yeah, I just don't, I don't look at it as funny. I think it's a, it's for me, it's a dramedy, uh, because there is also dark comedy in the, in it as well. But it's, um, it's very, it's very guttural. It's very real. The rage and um, all the emotions that follow after it. So. Yeah, highly recommend watching Beef. Uh, it's got an 89% average audience score. Don't look at that. It's, you know, it's whatever. You, you know, you go to Rotten Tomatoes, you trust them, okay? Because their average tomato meter is at 98%. So let me tell you something. The critics agree. They're like, yo, watch it. Because it was so 
fantastically well done and has, to me, has one of the greatest endings to a, a single season. Uh, not a show, but single season. Like I said, we don't know if there's going to be whatever. But anyway, so yeah, just watch two people who get, you know, <laughs> into a road rage and then literally do like a psychological and also physical sort of digging into each other's minds and lives and and uh, basically slowly consume uh, their their lives. Uh, they, well, they slowly consume each other and they get so trapped in it and they later realize that, well, again, I don't want to spoil anything, but they re later realize the bigger picture kind of thing. And then you sort of also get the real uh, authenticity and the, the genuine uh, flaws and also the similarities between the two characters and how they are more alike than they are different, you know? And it's, you know, I think it's just more about um, people and and how we interact with individuals and how we uh, i think a lot of our humane side comes out in certain occasions and um i mean this it's a lot of it it's it's a really like a character discovery kind of thing and something a lot of things that we can relate to very heavily i believe so please check it out uh beef is on netflix that's my recommendation of the week um i know some i'm thinking most of you have probably seen it but anyways i yeah i just i love this series so fucking much and it's highly highly recommendable all righty so, um, yeah, go watch Ali Wong and Steven Yun. Uh, just try to kill each other. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, these, these, uh, another Asian, Asian film, you know? Um, yeah, this is weird. It says comedy drama, psychological drama, thriller, tragic comma, which is tragedy comma, uh, tragedy comma, what the fuck? A tragic comedy, sorry, which is a tragedy comedy. I think it's better just, if they just put dramedy into it because those are, all the other things, you know, like psychological factors and a thriller and all that stuff. Yeah, it's in, in it, but it's not like, it's not the, I guess, the overarching theme to the to the storytelling. So, yeah, anyway, who, who cares what the genre is? You'll like it, that's for sure. Uh, but it's, uh, it's, yeah, it can get heavy, and it's got dry comedy, and um, you'll enjoy it. I'll tell you that right now. All right, guys, I will, uh, let's we'll wrap that up here. That's recommendation of the week. Um, so, uh, you know, what did we talk about? It's it's uh, Song Cron. It's, you know, it's hot as fuck everywhere. <laughs> um, you know, it's Boyla Boyshak in, 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 in Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, uh, in uh, in my motherland, Bangladesh. Um, and, now, you know, we had that trip to uh, Kanchanaburi with the fam as well. That was beautiful. I want to do it again. It was so fun and just relaxing as well, I think, to, to a certain point. It was crazy. We went crazy. We were having fun. And in relationship, let's keep it simple, people. It's that simple. All right? Much love. Um, yeah, we talked about Succession and, and The Mandalorian and, of course, Beef. Great content out there. I did not talk about my interview with Bali Sagu because I don't think I'm ready to talk about it because, I had. A, first of all, it was great. It was great, great, great. I was... I had a couple of fanboy moments. I apologize. I owe my... Wonderful, lovely uh, friend Sean, a fucking coffee because I lost a bet. I said I would not fanboy, but I did, like an idiot. Um, no, but it was in a classy way. It wasn't like, oh my god, I can't believe you're about to attack you. What am I getting cry? It wasn't like that. Um, <laughs> but we bonded on a couple of things. God damn it, uh, us us old heads, we bonded on a few things. Okay, so shout out to Bali Saga. God damn it. Um, I don't know if I, I don't really do want to talk about. It. I think I think it's more like. When it's all said and done, y'all can read about it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what I be doing. Uh, we'll be writing um, about the interview quite soon. Um, and Masala Magazine. Yeah. Um, yeah, until then, ladies and gentlemen, I'll see you all, see you all next episode here on the House of Booty Vintage. Thank you so much for listening here on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and of course, if you're watching this on YouTube. Thank you so much. I got to get going. I got to get going. Yeah. Um, I got to wrap this up pretty, pretty soon. And uh, yeah. Please enjoy yourselves, and if you've had a wonderful break, if, or you're in, I keep, I just had a brain fart, or if you're in currently a break, um, uh, you know, in a holiday, in the holiday uh, season or whatever you want to call it, um, there's plenty of holiday seasons in, in Thailand, uh, <laughs> but every day is a holiday. What can I say? Every day feels like a fucking weekend, um, and I love it. So please take care of yourselves um, and each other. Be kind to yourselves and each, and and to each other. Be kind to yourselves and to the next person and whoever is in your life. Just be cool and, and be nice, okay? Love each other. All right, I'm out of here. I've been blabbering. I, I do too much of this. 
Peace, positivity, and love, as always, ladies and gentlemen. Please know your worth, okay? Value yourself, respect yourself, and do things that make you happy without the expense of others or yourself. You get what I'm saying? Keep it safe. Keep it simple. And, and do things that are nice for you. Good for you and good for others, okay? I'm out of here. Get out. I'm out. I'm out. See y'all next week. Peace! Peace!